So this first example that I am going to do uh, for this module is to estimate rain at a gauge that might have missing data. So in this example, which you can find in your handout on page six and seven, we are given the precipitation data at four gauges, gauge A, B, C, and then what I'm calling X. These are all real gauge stations in the Santa Clara Valley Water District. And we are going to assume just for now that the uh, rain gauge data for station X is missing. And we're going to use three different methods to estimate the rain gauge data at X. And then we'll compare it to what was actually observed at X um, just to compare these different methods. And in your handout, you'll see an explanation of how you can find the distance between two points using latitude and longitude. I'm not going to go through the math of that, so when we get to using that information, I'll just tell you the distances. But if you ever need to do that, um, you could write an R script to do that, or you could use one of many different online sources, websites that are already set up to calculate the uh, distance between two spots given their latitude and longitude. So we're going to get started by using the simple averaging technique. Okay, and so the general form of that equation is just to take all of the nearby rain gauges and find their average. So we can write the general form of that equation. Um, we're going to find the precipitation at point X is equal to the precipitation at A plus the precipitation at B plus the precipitation at C divided by 3. So this is equal to 0 0.35 inches of rain plus 0 0.63 inches of rain plus 0 0.31 inches of rain divided by 3, which is equal to 0 0.43 inches of rain. So using the simple averaging technique, we would estimate the precipitation at that Sunnyvale site is equal to 0 0.43 inches of rain for this particular storm. Now we're going to go ahead and use the weighted average technique. And this weighted average uses long-term station data in addition to current storm data. Okay, so the general form of this equation for a case with three stations is given here, where the precipitation at x is going to be estimated by the long-term, the annual, annual average at x divided by the annual average at a times the storm total at a. And you do that same sum for all three stations and then divide by 3. So I'm going to pause it here and write out the equation, and then I'll come back in a second. Okay, so we have 14.5 divided by 13 times 0.35 plus 14.5 divided by 17.2 times 0 0.63, where that 17.2 is the annual average at site B, and the 0.63 is the rainfall for the storm at gauge B. And then we add to that 14.5 divided by 14.7 times 3.1, where that 14.7 is the average annual for point C, and the 0.31 is the current rainfall at the storm for point C. And you divide that all by 3, and you will get an estimate for site X of 0 0.41 inches for the current storm. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and use the inverse distance method. We can do this two different ways using the coefficient of b equal to 1 and the coefficient of b equal to 2. I'm going to go through the math here with the b equal to 1, and then I'll also give the answer for b equal to 2 without going through the math. So we kind of have to do two equations here. The first one is to find d, that which is sort of like a weighting. And this is where we're going to need the distances, right? So D is like a weight that we apply to give different amount of weight for each station. And so what I've drawn, written here 
which I'll underline in red, this D A to X, I'm writing, that's how I'm uh, identifying the distance between station A and station X, okay? And then I have D B to X, same thing, distance between B and X, and then I have the distance C to X. So what are these distances? If I run these through the calculators, you'll get that the distance from A to X is equal to 5.1 5 .1 kilometers. The distance from B to X is equal to 3.2 kilometers. And the distance from C to X is equal to 7.7 .7 kilometers. Okay, so now we can find our D, and our D is going to be equal to our big D is going to be equal to 1 over 5.1 plus 1 over 3.4 plus 1 over 7.7, .7, .7, which is 0 0.62. The units of this are 1 over kilometer. Now we can come over here and use this in our equation. And we will estimate, in this case, that the precipitation at point x is 1 over 0 0.62, which is, again, that d, times 0 0.35, the precipitation at point A for the storm, divided by 5.1, plus 0 0.63, the precipitation at B, divided by 3.2, distance from B to X, plus 0 0.31, divided by 7.7, .7, which is equal to 0 0.48 inches. Okay, and so we could repeat this. Again, I'll let you do this math on your own, but I'll just write the answer. If we did this with the same equation, but now use the weighting distance method with b is equal not to 1, but b equal to 2, you would get an estimate that p of x is equal to 0 0.52 inches. And what does that do? If you change that weighting factor, what it does is it gives more weight, a greater amount of weight to the stations that are closer to the missing than the ones that are further away, even more than the distance weighting uh, with a B of equal to one does. So in your handout, you'll see the very last question asks which of these perform the best. And so it's hard to really know um, we knew in this particular case that X was 0 0.43 inches, which we calculated when, in part A when we just used the regular mean. But that doesn't always tell the same, the right picture, right? Um, if you look at the location of B and you know a little bit about the uh, sort of geography of this area, B had the greatest amount of rain and that makes sense if you know um, that, that B is closer into the foothills where more rain falls. Um, and so in that case, maybe it makes sense to use the weighting average and get uh, point X to be closer to a little bit more to point to the rainfall in A, right? But um, it's just good to know how to estimate rainfall for a missing gauge. Uh, and these are just three different, well, four, really four different ways to do it. So you'll have some um, homework problems where you can try this for yourself. So go ahead and try those uh, as soon as you get a chance, and then we can discuss them over email or Zoom.